And now for another Jewish Holocaust Ahead, part two. In another Jewish Holocaust Ahead, part one, we talked about the prophecy of Jesus in which he foretold the coming slaughter of Jews of Judea. Don't forget, Judea is the West Bank where 365,000 Jews presently live. However, it will be made into a Palestinian state as soon as a Palestinian-Israeli peace agreement is achieved. Now we want to put all this into perspective. Where are we right now on God's timeline? What events are prophesied to happen over the next few years? And how soon could this prophesied Jewish Holocaust occur? In Matthew 24, 15 through 21, Jesus foretold the terrible Holocaust of Jews that will soon take place. This prophesied Jewish slaughter will occur three and one half years after the peace agreement is signed between Israel and the Palestinians. Many people, including U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, believe this agreement could be signed by the spring of 2014. I want you to see the prophecy for yourself. In Matthew 24, 15 through 21, we read the prophecy. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. The bad news is, that another Jewish Holocaust is coming. It's prophesied in the Bible, and the prophecies always come to pass. The good news is, there is a way for the Jews to escape the coming slaughter. Jesus gave this warning specifically so that those who would listen could escape. Now, here at End Time Ministries, we intend to do everything within our power to make sure that every Jew living in Judea hears the warning of Jesus loud and clear. It will then be up to each person to listen and escape. Those who refuse to obey the warning are the ones who will be slaughtered. Jesus clearly stated in the prophecy that the coming persecution would be triggered by an event called the abomination of desolation. In order for all of us to know when the abomination of desolation will occur, let's look at the future timeline of events as prophesied in Scripture. This is a simple timeline. It's the timeline of the final seven years. The final seven years will begin with the Middle East Peace Agreement, the one they're working on right now. We don't know yet when they're going to get that agreement, but whenever it is, that will start the final seven years. Three and a half years later, the abomination of desolation will occur. That will begin the time of great tribulation that we've already read about. And that's when the Jews living in Judea will have to run for their lives. That begins the three and a half years of great tribulation, culminating with the battle of Armageddon. It's at Armageddon that Jesus Christ returns to this earth, puts down the governments of men, and that's when we will crown him King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and his 1,000-year reign of peace will begin. Another thing we need to know about this timeline, where are we right now? Well, the final seven years has not yet begun. However, 
it appears that we are right before the time of that final seven years to begin. John Kerry believes the peace agreement will be achieved within the next five to eight months. We don't know for sure. Maybe it will be a year or two years or three. But according to our Secretary of State here in the U.S., he thinks it'll be within the next five to eight months. Now think of that. That's how close we really could be to entering the final seven years. Now I want to share with you our plan here at End Time to warn the Jews living in Judea. I also want to ask you to help us to warn them. We need your help. Remember, this coming Jewish Holocaust could happen as soon as four years from right now. We're going to have to work with all of our might between now and then to make sure we effectively reach every single Jew with the warning of Jesus in Matthew 24. We anticipate investing about $5 million in the effort to inform them all. I know this sounds like a lot of money, but it's not very much to spend on trying to save the Jewish people, the people who gave us our Bible and our Savior, Jesus Christ. All we need is 10,000 people to give $500 each. Most of us can manage to do that. I have a special gift of appreciation. I want to give to each person that will donate $500 or more to the Israel Project. We have produced a DVD entitled Seeds of Armageddon, November 29, 2012. The world started down the road to the Battle of Armageddon on November 29, 2012. Most people on earth don't even know what happened on that day. I explain all about it in this special DVD. Now this DVD is not for sale. You can only obtain it by joining with End Time Ministries in saving the Jews of Judea. Seeds of Armageddon, November 29, 2012, is our special gift of appreciation to you for helping us reach the Jews of Judea by donating $500 or more to the Israeli Project. Please start calling right now. The number to call, 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. Or you can donate online by going to endtime.com slash JPC. That's Jerusalem Prophecy College. endtime.com slash JPC. Let's go back to our timeline now. Let's look at some more details. The seven years will begin with the Middle East peace agreement. That's when a Palestinian state is going to be established. The Jews, many of them, are going to stay in their homes under a Palestinian state. This has been a big problem in the Middle East peace talks. What do you do with these 365,000 Jews that are right now living in territory that will become the Palestinian state? They've been wrestling with this political football for a long time. Finally, the Prime Minister of the Palestinians, Salam Fayyad, a few months ago said it's simple. The Jewish people can stay where they are, will respect their property rights, they can continue their businesses, they can simply live as a Jewish minority in the newly born Palestinian state. He said, after all, we have 1.6 million Arabs living in Israel under the Israeli state, so why couldn't we live, have a few hundred thousand Jews living as a Jewish minority in the Palestinian state? Well, that's what's going to happen because many of these Jews are saying, we're not leaving. Even if our nation withdraws from the territory, this is our promised land and we are not leaving. Not, all, not only will there be a Palestinian state created, but the Temple Mount is going to be placed under a sharing arrangement. Both Muslims and Jews insist the Temple Mount belongs to us. The Dome of the Rock, the Al-Aqsa Mosque is there. 
But to the Jews, this is their holiest place on earth. This was where their first temple was built. This is where their second temple stood. Now they want to build their third temple. They say to the Muslims, uh, you've got your first holy site in Mecca. You've got your second holy site in Medina. This is only your third holy site. Us Jews don't even have our first holy site. So how do you solve this dilemma? Well, the proposal is that the Temple Mount will be placed under a sharing arrangement so that the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque will not be disturbed, but the Jews will have a place to worship north of the Dome of the Rock. As a matter of fact, the Bible says they will actually build their temple north of the Dome of the Rock. Also, as part of this agreement, Jerusalem will temporarily stay under total Israeli control. That's the reason it's going to be a seven-year agreement. It's an interim agreement. They're not going to be able to agree on the status of Jerusalem. So rather than throw the whole thing out, they're going to say we'd rather have half a loaf as no loaf at all. So let's go ahead and make an interim agreement and we'll leave the Jerusalem issue until later, apparently from the Bible about seven years later. Now I told you the Temple Mount is going to be placed under a sharing agreement. There is already a bill in the Israeli Knesset to share the Temple Mount. Of course, the Muslims want nothing to do with this, but the Israelis hold sovereignty over that entire area. It appears that's what's getting ready to happen because the Bible specifically prophesies that a temple will stand on the Temple Mount and yet much of the Temple Mount will be under Gentile control during the final three and a half years. So during the first three and a half years, the Jews will build their temple. Once the temple is finished, they're going to resume animal sacrifices as they did in the Old Testament. Under the first and second temple era, they offer a sacrifice every morning, every evening. So when this temple is done, it's what their scriptures tell them to do. They don't still have faith in the New Testament. Consequently, they're going to resume the animal sacrifices. Then the Bible says halfway through the seven-year period, the Antichrist is going to stop the sacrifices. Apparently, the animal rights activists are going to go berserk when they see these little animals dying every morning, every night. They're going to say to the Antichrist, wait a minute, you're in charge here because when we put the Temple Mount under a sharing arrangement, we put it under international control. You're the international leader of the world. You've got to stop this. Well, he's going to stop it. He may say something like, look, I'm your Messiah. You don't need these sacrifices anymore because the teaching has taken hold in our society today that there's a lot of different religions, but they all really worship the same God that Muslims call him Allah, Jews call him Jehovah, Christians call him Jesus. But many people, including President Barack Obama, say really it's the same God, just called by different names. Now the Antichrist will apparently take it one more step. He will probably say to all the religions of the world, you're all looking for an anointed one. The Jews are looking for Messiah. The Christians are looking for the second coming of Christ. The Muslims are looking for the Mahdi. The Buddhists are looking for the fifth Buddha. So even as you really are worshiping the same God, you really are looking for the same anointed one to come. Well, I haven't said anything about it until now, but I feel the time has come for me to tell you, I am your Messiah. I am your second coming of Christ. I am the Mahdi. I am your fifth Buddha. You're all looking for the same person. And he will attempt to pull the world together it's called the revealing of the Antichrist in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. That's when the Great Tribulation begins, and that's what God called the abomination of desolation. When the Antichrist stands on the Temple Mount, the place where God said, I will put my name there, and claims to be Messiah and God. That's the abomination of desolation, and that's when Jesus told the Jews, you will have to run for your life. Now, this is actually going to take place. And when the Jews run for their life, the ones who believe our warning, then they will be saved. The, for the rest, the great slaughter will begin. Now that begins the final three and a half years called the Great Tribulation. It's during the final three and a half years that the mark of the beast is implemented 
the enforcement mechanism of the Antichrist, everyone is going to have to pledge allegiance to his new world order and probably to him personally. If you don't, he will withhold your global ID number so you'll not be allowed to hold a job in your particular nation without your national ID. By then it will be a global ID. And with no job, no buying and selling. Well, all this is going to culminate at the end of the seven years with the Battle of Armageddon. And it's at Armageddon that the second coming of Jesus Christ will occur. So what's end time plan? And why am I helping you, asking you to help us? The first thing we want to do is pay off our Jerusalem Prophecy College property. The college is scheduled to open in November of 2013. That's not very far from the time that I'm producing this DVD right now. As soon as we close on the property, we're going to remodel the college, preparing it for the first semester of the Jerusalem Prophecy College. At this time, we're also going to install video conferencing between End Time Studio here in Plano, Texas, and Jerusalem. We will have a virtual classroom. So I will be able to stand here, or any other professor can stand here, teach the students in Jerusalem. I'll be able to see the students. They'll be able to see me. We'll be able to interact together to dialogue. It'll be a virtual classroom. Then on November the 2nd, of 2013, we will hold our first annual Jerusalem Prophecy Conference. My subject will be Israel's future according to Bible prophecy. We believe we'll be able to fill up the 600 seat auditorium that's in the same building where we are purchasing floor space for the Jerusalem Prophecy College. It's that night that we will be launching the Jerusalem Prophecy college. Our goal for the college is to train a core of Jewish people concerning the prophecies of the Bible because there's going to be a wave of revival come later. And when this wave comes in, we're going to need a core of well-trained Jewish people that really know what they're talking about so that all of these new people, when they come in at the time of the abomination of desolation, that they will be able to lead them and to help them. Now, as soon as the peace agreement is signed, we're going to mail a special edition of End Time Magazine to every home in Israel. There's something like 2.5 to 3 million households in Israel. We want to mail a magazine to every one of them. That's part of what your contribution is going to go toward. And this magazine is going to explain everything I'm telling you today, everything in the video, uh, Seeds of Armageddon, Everything I'm talking to you about is going to be explained in this magazine that's going to go to every home in Israel, including the West Bank, including the area of Judea. We're also going to advertise the college in that magazine. We'll advertise our presence on Israeli television. We're going to tell them how they can come to our website, how they can listen to our daily radio television broadcast. Uh, we'll tell them that as well in the magazine. Now we're going to continue during the first three and a half years to build up the college and to broaden our television coverage to the nation of Israel. Okay, so now we get to the halfway point. The abomination of desolation occurs and the Jews have to flee for their life. They're going to come to Jerusalem, to our prophecy college, and to the special prophecy conference we've already planned for that particular time. When they flee, they will come to our prophecy conference. At that conference, we're going to tell the Jews in the magazine and on the television in advance that they've got to come to the conference. When they escape and they see their fellow Jews, they're going to look over their shoulder, they're going to see them perishing, being slaughtered. They're going to see their fellow Jews who didn't believe the warning being killed they will know it was the prophecy of Jesus that saved their lives. Now at our conference, we're going to say to them, the prophecy of Jesus just saved your physical life. Now, let us tell you about eternal life through Jesus Christ. 
There's a scripture that actually says this is going to happen in Zechariah chapter number 12, verse number 7. Now we know there's a revival coming where all of Israel shall be saved. That's going to happen at the time of the Battle of Armageddon. That's when Jesus comes to the Mount of Olives. The Jews rush out to meet him and they're going to worship their Messiah. When they do, they're going to notice he has nail scars in his hands and his feet. The Bible says in Zechariah 13, 6, they will say to him, Messiah, where'd you get these wounds? And he'll say, oh, I received these in the house of my friends. And they're going to say, so you're Jesus. And he's going to say, yes, I'm Jesus. All of Israel will then turn to Jesus. He will forgive them. And the Bible says all of them that have survived the great tribulation and the wrath of God will then turn to Jesus in mass. However, there's another revival coming first. I believe for a long time that when the Jews would flee from Judea and come to our prophecy conference, that God would send a great revival that day. Then I found a scripture that substantiated what I had come to believe. Zechariah 12, 7 says, The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, before the revival when all of Israel is saved. The Lord will save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves or exalt themselves against Judah. What's that all about? Well, right now in Israel, the people who live in Israel proper look down their nose at the Jews of Judea. They think they're religious extremists. They think they're rednecks. And because they are determined to keep their houses out there in the occupied territories, biblical Judea, Samaria, the Jews in Israel proper believe the settlers are endangering the state of Israel. If you would just come back into Israel proper, turn over all the land we captured in the 67 war, the world would love us. Right now, we're in danger of being marginalized and ostracized by the world. So they look down their nose at these people who attempted to obey God because God said, when I bring you into the land that I prophesied to your, that I promised to your father Abraham, you are to occupy the land. Well, that's what they tried to do. But now the Jews in Israel that don't take the scriptures seriously, they look down their nose at them. God said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just send the revival to the people of Judah, Judea that tried to do my will. I'll send them the revival first. So what's going to happen? We know that a great revival took place in the city of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. Does anyone believe God could do that again? It was the day of Pentecost. Now, the scriptures tell us there's going to be a time of great revival right during the Great Tribulation. Here's the passage, Daniel 11, 32 through 33. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he the Antichrist corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Our course is called understanding the end time. They that understand shall instruct many. So between the college, between the conferences, between the television, between the magazines, we're going to be there to impart understanding to the Jewish people. Now, the promised Jewish revival is in progress right now. Ezekiel 37 records a prophecy of a valley full of dry bones. God told Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, I don't know, God, this is bad. God said, prophesy. Ezekiel prophesied to the bones. They came together. This is a prophecy of the end of the Jewish exile. The Jews have been in exile since 70 AD until May the 14th of 1948. Now God has brought them back together. You and I have witnessed the fulfillment of that prophecy. However, the revival is not complete. Now the bones came together, then muscle came on the bones. That's happened. Israel is now the mightiest military force in the Middle East. Flesh comes on the muscle. But then God said, I will put my spirit within them. That hasn't happened yet. So the Jewish revival will be completed during the final seven years culminated at Armageddon. And End Time Ministries, with your participation, plans to be a part of that great revival. Okay, you and I have the privilege of participating in this revival. Help us not only save the Jews of Judea from the coming Holocaust, but also to lead them to a full understanding 
of the Bible's prophecies. Please donate to the Israel Project and the Jerusalem Prophecy College. Call right now. The number to call is 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463 or go to endtime.com slash JPC. Now, our gift of appreciation to you, you're going to receive our brand new DVD, Seeds of Armageddon, November 29, 2012. This is not available for purchase. This is a special gift to the people that will help us reach the Jewish people in the short time we have left. It's really urgent. Now, here's what the Bible has to say. In Genesis 12, 3, God told Abraham, I will bless those that bless thee. I will curse those that curse thee. This is our chance to be a blessing to the people of Israel. So call right now. 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463 or go to endtime.com slash JPC. One more time, as our gift of appreciation to all who donate $500 or more, you're going to receive our brand new DVD, Seeds of Armageddon, November 29, 2012. As I said earlier, we started down the road toward Armageddon on November 29, 2012. In this DVD, we explain all about what happened that day and how that set mankind on the road to the Battle of Armageddon. So call right now. Our operators are standing by. We're urgent. We could be four, five, six months away from the signing of this peace agreement when we need to send three million magazines to the households of Israel. Call us at 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com slash JPC. Together, we will rescue the Jews of Judea from the coming Holocaust. My last word to all of you. I believe it's a wonderful privilege to reach for the kinsmen of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They gave us our Messiah, but because they rejected Him, they were driven into exile. Now then, they're back. It's our time to help them. Call us, 800-END-TIME.